Hey guys, in this video we're going to learn how to use a normal table. Specifically, this is a standard normal table. That's a Z table. So, as you can see, oftentimes these tables have a picture at the very top, which more or less explains without using any words really, well, very little words, how the table itself works. So the way this table this particular Z table works is that it gives you the area between a negative and positive Z value. Um, let's review some basics on the normal table. <coughs> Specifically the standard normal bell-shaped curve is centered at zero, has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Um, we know that 50% of z values are less than zero and 50% are greater. So basically it's symmetric about the mean, which is zero. Okay, so what this will tell us, so for example, if we come down here in this first column here, we see z. When z is zero, the area, which equals probability, Right? the area under a probability density function under the normal curve is equal to the probability in that particular interval. So what this is starting us off with is the area be or the probability between negative zero and positive zero, in, in other words between zero and itself is zero. Well that's, that's silly. But if we go up to 0.5, so z is, sorry, 0.05 that is saying replace these guys with these values. 0.05. Be careful what I'm drawing, drawing here, writing here are z values. Don't confuse them with probabilities. So what this row right here is saying is that the probability of getting a z value between negative 0.05 and positive 0 0.05 is equal to 3.99 or 0 0.0399. That's that's a percentage. Okay, so it doesn't indicate that, but that's obvious because you can't have a proportion greater than one. So these are all the areas are all converted to uh, percentages. Okay, so just move it over two decimal places. In other words, divide by 100 and you'll get the proportion. If you like to keep it as a percentage, just use the value as is. Okay, so that's how this table works. So let's just do another one. Let's say what you're looking for is uh, the area between uh, negative 3 and 3. You would come here and you would replace these guys with negative 3 and 3 and this is telling us that 99.73 percent of z values of are between these two numbers so in other words the area here is 0.9973 okay now what if you wanted to know the probability of getting a, a, a z value greater than 3 well, the way you would do that is, first off, let's write it out, probability of z being greater than 3. Hypothetically, let's say we want to know this. Well, we would come and find 3 here, and we see that's 9973. Okay, actually, let's clean up a bit. We'd see that that is 9973. And we know by symmetry that 50% of that 0.9973 is to the right and 50% of that is to the left. And we know from earlier that the total area under any probability density function is 1 or 100%. And that in a normal curve, 50% of that is to the left of of the mean and 50% is to the right. So in order to get the tail, 
in, in let's say to get the tails we could do one minus this number because that's what's left over that would be both of these tails and if we just wanted this probability in other words the one what I had written before z being greater than 3 then we would just divide this by 2 again because of symmetry and that would be the probability of z being greater than 3 and by the way that would also be the probability of z being a less than negative 3 which is this probability the idea is you have to know some basic things. You have to know that the total area under the curve is 1. That goes for every probability distribution. Then you have to know that 50% of that area is to the right of 0, 50% is to the left. That goes for the standard normal distribution, which is what the Z table is all about. Now, knowing those two pieces of information, you can use any table to answer any question that you can dream up. Okay, uh, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, I don't use this particular table in uh, my my classes, but uh, it's worth learning how to use all Z tables because once you understand the principles and you can uh, understand how that particular table works, you can use any table and you're flexible to to choose which one you you kind of want to use. They will all give you the same results. So I uh, hope this was helpful. Please subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, have a great day.